Hello, everybody. I am Row Boy. It's great to be here at TEDx Dunn. I am a very special robot because unlike other robots, I have muscles like you do. And Raphael will tell you why. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Roboy. Um, as you can see, Roboy is quite special. Uh, first of all, it's because he's very soft. I can interact with him. I can. This is something you could not do with any other robot, by the way. But um, let's talk about robots with muscles. And let me begin why we're actually building this. It all started with the big question, what is intelligence? And I think there's about as many opinions in here as there are people. And there's this very Descartian view um, of intelligence, I think, therefore I am. And a lot of research in the past has been conducted in trying to understand the brain and how the brain functions and how, um, what complex things it does. And we've been tremendously successful in this. We have programs that are better at playing chess than anyone in here and any human in the world. We have Google, which analyzes vast amount of data and we got tremendous results. But there is another part of intelligence we, where we're still very, very bad on, and it's interacting with our environment. Just taking a glass of a table, it's tremendously difficult for a robot, and that's why we're talking in robotics of embodied intelligence, because we want to study how intelligence emerged in, together with our bodies. And I can show you in a very, very simple example why you can't just look at the brain to understand intelligence. Let's see. So we have this very interesting Lego creature, and it's rolling over this table. We have this other one, which is more like a seal, and it's <laughs> more like robbing over the table. And we have this very crazy thing, it's called Crazy Bird, and it, <laughs> and it even rotates, and, and it has a very, very rich behavior. It rotates, it moves around the table, and that's the actual control. All of these three robots have been controlled by exactly the same behavior, so the intelligence was none, it was just rotating. And to understand how these behaviors come true, come to life, you need to look at the body, at, at the morphology, at the materials of these robots and to understand how they are built. So what we do is we build robot because when we understand something, we only know once we built it. When, you, when I can build something, I know I really understood it because I have living proof, it's there. And so a few years ago, we built a lot of creatures, also dogs and whatnot, but here we have robots, so I'm going to talk about human robots. And it started in around 2007 with Kronos. And this is a robot, it has been built by hand, by an artist. So the material it's made of, it's called polymorph. You can just mold it by hand. You take a hot glue fan and you move it around, and it's, 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 a, very, um, it's a very artistic thing to do. And which is, it's a nice robot. Um, it had the problem that it took three years to build and the researchers wanted to do models and like, try to control it. This one actually was built with a very cheap motors that you get from screwdrivers. So we thought, well, maybe we need some, something better in terms of motor, so we know at least something about this robot, like having good motors with good models. So another robot was built, and this is actually, it's quite a dynamic robot, it's the second one. But still, it took years to build. It's, there's only this one, and if you want to simulate it on the computer, there's a huge question on how do you get it there. So there were experiments where they tried to scan the, scan the robot, like 3D scanning, but you can see it's, a very, it's like a skeletal robot, so it's very hard to scan. There's a lot of like, things inside, so this wasn't really successful. And you would have to do it for every robot again. And because you want to study these systems, Anthrop was built. It was the end of this Edge robot project, which is a EU project. And this has basically been built on the PC. So where it's a, a CAD program, they designed the robot, and then they built it. And this robot is now here um, at TU Munich in our lab. We do experience with this. So we thought now we have a, have a good direction where we push our research. But we also thought, well, but nobody's really knowing about it. And it's, in robotics, it's very orthogonal to standard research. Like standard robotics is about huge robots that are very stiff because you want to do very precise movements. But we try to imitate the human body. And I'm not very stiff, nor do I do very precise movements? I mean, you can try it yourself. Uh, if you close your eyes, try to push a point, retract your hand and push again, you will be off by one or two centimeters. And so we're not very precise, but we're still extremely apt in doing things. And we wanted to tell about this kind of story. So we thought, well, we need a messenger. 
There was a very good occasion because the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in Zurich, Prof. Professor Pfeiffer turned 25. So in June 2012, the decision was made to build this kind of messenger as a birthday present for this laboratory. We worked together with an artist from this new research and he built his first ideas and we refined them into different kind of setups. The qualities he wanted this robot to have, it should be very, very friendly to interact with. It should be, um, it should not scare anyone. <laughs> You know where this is going? Yeah, that was a big question. Is this really cute? <laughs> you need to know about this robot that it was only built in, in, in nine months, like a human body. It was coincidence. But because the, the time was so short, we worked with a lot of company, and one of the companies, they basically, um, we, were, we didn't have a plan for the head, and we went to some event presenting the idea, and then their CEO stood up and was like, yeah, we're going to build your head. And, which was perfect, because we didn't have a plan for that. Luckily, it was also a very artistic company. They had like design integrated in the process properly, and they came up with a lot of ideas on how this head might look. But then the question is, well, how do we decide? So we did a Facebook voting, because we wanted to integrate the community very, very early on, and um, that's what they voted on. And then a few months later, the, the cat was complete. Here, Robo is standing and walking. Um, it's sitting because it can't do this yet. And then it was about to build it, so Robo is completely 3D printed, so building it was fairly simple. And then we had to assemble it. This took quite a while. I wish you could assemble that fast. Yeah, that's just the torso and then the legs and so on. But eventually, he was done. So we had our, our robot. But then the question was, I mean, we were, we were scientists, so we wanted to know, is it a good web center? Did we do a good job? So there was this, this huge fair in Zurich where Robo was being presented, and we had this show that it's, um, it's called Robots on Tour. It basically invited all the humanoids of the world to join Robo's so-called birth. And well, it, it took place in Zurich in March 2013, and that was the queue. And the people queued for three hours. Uh, we were a bit taken by surprise, but it was a great event. So, from the very beginning, we had the question, how do we present Roboy to the world? And the thing is, it's already been built, so there's no birth kind of thing. So what we decided was to work together with artists to create a piece of art, a, a play. It took it's 25 minutes, in which Robo is uncovering himself. It was a play about the question of, of where, where do robots start and humans end, or the other way around. And it was a very interesting way, and we really loved this interaction with uh, artists. Um, so we continue it, we still give, play this play, we actually played it in Munich already. Uh, we went on tour. This is about Roboy's 50th event. So <laughs> we've also been around the world, we've been in China, we've been in Washington. In China it was very special. Um, we did a theater play ad hoc with the local um, theater, theater crew. So we arrived at 11 o'clock, the show was 16 o'clock, so we had like five hours to figure out what we're going to show. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was amazing. Uh, we were filming in Shanghai. This was interesting. You can see Robo in a wheelchair. Because he can't walk yet, but this is, was nice. It was a cooperation with a local professor who um, built an autonomous wheelchair. So it's a perfect combination. Robo can't walk yet, but we have a wheelchair which can drive him around and avoid people, crashing to people. So it was perfect cooperation. And we, this was this amazing. Um, then there's another project we're doing Roboy at school. Uh, so on 1st of July this year, Roboy is going to a school and there's a whole day where four classes will have school together with Roboy. They will learn about their own body because Roboy is actually built after our bodies. So, so the muscle connections and so on, they're roughly more or less realistic. That's the large muscles that we have as well. Um, there's also, of course, a challenge who can build the fastest robot. So we've been to the largest um, IT. Um, fair in the world. So, it's a good messenger, but what about research? So what have we done in the meantime? And this is our current project, it's called My Robotics. And My Robotics is quite different from Roboy. It doesn't look as cute and humanoid, but it's more interesting in terms of research because it's modular. So My Robotics consists of different modules. You can see their bones, their muscles, and there is these joints, and you can basically assemble any robot that you would ever need. And it has very interesting properties. For example, it can throw balls, and you might not 
think this is not too interesting because, well, I mean, we all can throw balls. But what's interesting about it is it, it basically uses a principle that we humans are using to throw balls. You can throw a ball that far because you're, when you basically con start to throw, you contract all the muscles in your thorax and then only release uh, the back ones. You basically store energy in your muscles, and that's something we can basically look at in this kind of setup. So, so this is something that's very unique in robotics. It's, it's, it's a different approach. Um, we will see where it leads. We're also starting to build a quadruped. And it's basically it's the same modules that we've seen before. So you have a huge toolkit uh, of, of, of pieces, and you can assemble whatever you want, a walking robot, uh, throwing robot, an arm, maybe a robot at some point. And because we use 3D printing, you can also mix. So we could replace parts of robot with parts of my robotics because we all need small adapters and so on. So we have a very nice hardware. We have a messenger, but there is still something missing in the beginning. And while we have all these nice hardware, we still need to think about how to control it. So we need brains. Okay, luckily our chair is um, working together with the Human Brain Project. It's um, one of the, it's this large European initiative where one billion euro is being spent on creating brains, on, on gathering um, data for uh, neural research. So it's led by EPFL in Switzerland. We at our lab are leading the neural robotic sub-project and the whole idea of this is basically taking this huge amount of brain data that is being generated and brain models and connect it with our robots so that we can create artificial creatures and we can really learn about um, how this interaction works because now we have these bodies that we can use as you saw in the beginning and we hope that we will further this kind of research through this connection. So in conclusion, we have bodies, nice hardware, modular hardware, very well suited for research. We have neural tissue, we have, we have brains so to simulate control strategies. And we have a very, very cute messenger. This is, by the way, Professor Pfeiffer, who is the father of Roboy. And we really hope that, that integrating this, this knowledge from this different kind of domains helps us bring robotics further to create robots that interact better with our life. So yeah, maybe Roboy has some last words. Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future. Thank you for your attention.